and welcome back to BSG TV, the official YouTube page of the Bootstrapper's Guide. I'm Tori Norman, and let's continue part two of our conversation on running transactions inside of Wave Accounting. So in part one, we talked about creating income transactions. You can see we've created income transactions by this little green bar on our income and expenses financial snapshot. We went into our income page and created both an invoice for Walmart and just a general quick entry sales transaction. Now let's look at expense transactions. Just like on our invoice page, we can enter a bill or we can just do a quick entry. I think you'll find you'll use the quick entry a lot more frequently in your expense category than uh, you would on your income. And that's because not many of our transactions on the expense side are entered as bills. Like, you would have a utility bill or maybe a rent bill where you receive the bill and you want to record that it needs to be paid, but you don't really need to pay it right now. When you have an instance like that, it's good to go into the Enter Bill section and create that bill so that it's recognized as a future expense inside your business and helps you plan your cash flow. It also reminds you that you gotta pay your bills so you actually get them paid on time. But for a lot of our transactions, especially in today's world, we just pull out the debit card and we pay for it. So I need, you know, I run out of ink, I run out of paper, and I run over to Home Depot or Home Depot, yeah, that'll work. Office Depot, one of those. It's a depot. Run over to like Office Depot and pick up some paper, pay for it right then. And by the time I get back to the office and I go to enter it into Wave Accounting, it's already been paid. So there's no real reason to create a bill and pay the bill. We can just use the quick entry and say, here's an expense. Here's what I paid. And it doesn't create that extra step of having to create the bill and pay it off. So I think you'll see you'll use the, the quick entry a lot more frequently here. Let's look at creating a bill, though and I kind of walk through the longer process of of doing like a bill. So in this case mm -hmm. we have our vendor the widget store. We buy our widgets from them from time to time and uh, they usually have us pay on a due in 30 days. So just like our invoices we can set up our payment terms. This should really look very familiar to you because it's it's pretty much the invoice <laughs> screen that we were looking at in our previous episode. The invoice number, if they sent you a paper invoice or a digital copy of an invoice, it should have had a number on it. So we'll give it a number. Um, we received it today. It's not due till the 15th. And uh, we never send the PO number to them, so that's not an issue. The notes, you can add notes if they left them for you or, you know, notes to yourself. We ordered some WW310Bs, and you'll notice, like we mentioned before, the sales price actually appears on your bill instead of a cost for you. I've sent requests into WAVE to fix that. Hopefully in future episodes, we'll be able to show you how a better method has been determined to handle those but for the time being you just need to be very careful when you're building a bill to change this to the cost that it actually cost you to um, to purchase them. We'll say that we buy them for $249.95 uh, they don't charge us sales tax because we ordered them out of state um, so it's just a flat out Two forty nine ninety five. Now here's one of those places. I know in our invoices we showed you how you could override the tax section. This I think is one of the places you might see yourself overriding the sales tax a little bit more frequently, because here it may have calculated seventeen point twelve, but maybe whatever software Widget Store uses to create their invoices rounded differently than we did and it came out to be 1711 instead of 1712 or something like that you really want to make sure that that tax matches what was actually on the invoice and what needs to be paid so uh, you can override that right there and now our amounts show up we can compare that to the paper invoice and it matches the 26706 
so we can save our bill. We can either save it and it will go back to the main screen or we can save and create a new bill. So, actually, you know what? I lie. I don't think it goes back to the main screen. Yep, yep, it does. Okay. Uh -huh. So, here's our bill that we just barely created. And it's not due until 30 days out, so we don't want to pay that yet. But it keeps a good record of what's out there that still needs to be paid. And uh, we can see that the amount due is still 267, so we know that it needs to be paid. Now, what if we just ran down to the widget store one day because we were a widget short? And, uh, or even, you know what? Like I said before, if we ran over and bought a ream of paper, I can say that cash came from our cash on hand account. I just grabbed out of our petty cash and ran down to the store and bought it. We'll say this is office supplies and uh, Office Depot, not Home Depot, is not here. So let's create a new vendor really quick. Let's just say Office Depot. Good enough. The rest of the information we can fill in later. And I bought a ream of paper on sale. And it was really on sale because it was only ninety-five. And I did have to pay Utah sales tax for that. So it came out to 208. You know, if you want to track it that way, you can. If you don't know what the sales tax is, if you just want to write the amount in, you can do that too. You know, whatever. But we recorded the sales tax there, so go ahead and add that expense. And you'll notice the difference here. You can see our transactions down here at the bottom. Office Depot shows zero amount due. Widget Store still shows the amount due because this one was paid in cash right at the moment. But we still need to track that inside of Wave as an expense, so that's what this quick entry can be used for. And like I said, I think you'll see yourself using quick entry on the expense side much more frequently than you'll see it on the income side. Now let's go back to our dashboard since we've got a few minutes left on this video. I just want to show you, now that we've entered some of those transactions, we can see them in here in, in uh, the financial snapshot. You're really not going to see much of your expenses because they're so small in comparison to this a $79,000 income that we created from Walmart. Um, but they're there and you'll see these bars start to fluctuate as you run more transactions and you're looking day to day and month to month. You can also scroll down here to this payable and owing section and see that we don't have any invoices coming due. They were all paid in our last episode, but we do have these bills coming due. And if they're coming due soon, then they'll show up down here. If there's one to 30 days out, you know, you can start to see kind of these buckets here for your agings, but uh, in this case this one's coming due and if you wanted to you can even click on it from the main screen and uh, it'll pull up an aging for you that'll give you a feel for what's coming up due and how old they are. So one thing to keep in mind with these aging buckets both here and there is uh, this means that it's coming due these means that it's overdue. So you never want to see any bills in here and you really don't want to see any invoices in here either because that's telling you that they're not paying and that you're not paying and that's not good. So you want to keep as much up here in the coming due section as you can. Um, reality of business is it doesn't always work that way but um, that's kind of your aging buckets at a glance and that's really handy. You can also see some of your other business information out here. You can see some of your other transactions you've had, what some of your other expenses and income are, and get a feel for uh, what's going on in your in your business right here from the dashboard. Later on we'll look at a few other reports, but uh, since these transactions were created, I just want to show you where you can find them and look at them really quickly. So that's creating in transactions inside of Wave Accounting. In our next episode, we'll look at how to import transactions from the bank. There's a couple of ways you can do that and how to link what we do with the bank with what we've done today. So check back with us in a bit. Look for that additional episode and we'll move forward with how to run transactions inside Wave Accounting.